Welcome to a presentation on differentials. The goals of this video will be to determine the differentials of functions, use differentials to make approximations, and also to determine propagated and relative error. If f of x is a differentiable function, then dy or differential y is equal to f prime of x times differential x or dx. The idea behind differentials is that a tangent line can be viewed as a linear approximation or tangent line approximation to a function. So here when we're talking about differential y, we're actually talking about the change in y of the tangent line, and we're comparing that to the change in y of the actual function. And with the change of y of the function is approximately equal to the derivative of the function times differential x, or dx. Differentials are quite straightforward to find. If you can find the derivative of a function, dy dx is equal to f prime of x, then you can rewrite this in differential form as dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. Let's take a look at what's happening when we use differentials graphically. Here we see a function in blue and a tangent line in red. If we take a closer look at what's happening at this point of tangency, again in blue we have the function, in red we have the tangent line. If we let the change of x, delta x, equal dx, meaning the change of x is the same for the function in the tangent line, what we should notice is that delta y, the change of y of the function, is approximately equal to differential y, the change in y on the tangent line. And that's the whole idea. Differential y is approximately delta y, and dx is equal to delta x. Let's first start by finding differentials. So what we'll do is essentially find the derivative and then rewrite it in differential form. Now we want to find the derivative of this. We do need to realize that we have to apply the chain rule. We have an inner function and an outer function. So dy dx will be equal to applying the power rule, 3 halves times u to the 3 halves minus 1 or 1 half times u prime. Well, if this is our u, we would have 2x to the third plus 1 here, and our u prime would be the derivative of this inner function, or 6x squared. Cleaning this up, this 2 would simplify with this 6 to become a 3, and we would have 9x squared times the quantity 2x to the third plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Well, if this is the derivative function, then differential y would equal 9x squared 2xu plus 1 to the 1 half power times dx. Okay, let's take it one step further now. For this function, we want to find differential y when x equals 4 and dx equals 0 0.03. Remember, dx is the change in x. So let's first start by finding the differential. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this in differential form from the beginning. Differential y will be equal to the derivative of this function. Again, we have a composite function, so we'll apply the chain rule. 4 times u to the third power times u prime, which is going to be 3. And then, of course, we have times dx, because we're talking about differential y. Simplifying. Well, now, since they're giving us the value of x and the value of dx, we, we can replace x with 4 and dx with 0 0.03 and evaluate dy. So differential y would be 12 times, this would be 12 minus 10, or 2 to the third, that would give us 8 times 0 0.03, which is equal to 2.88. So again, what we're measuring is the change in y of the tangent line, which is approximately equal to delta y, the change in y of the function, if x changes from 4 to 4.033, a change in x of 0.03. Another purpose of differentials is to approximate the value of a function. Let's say we want to evaluate the square of 99.7 without a calculator. Well, that would be very difficult to do, but we can use differentials to help us. We know this is very close to the square of 100, which is obviously going to equal 10. So what differentials allow us to do is pick a more convenient value of x to approximate the value of a function like this. Now here's the idea. If we let our function equal the square root function, 
we essentially want to find f of 99.7. However, that's difficult to do, so what we can do is use an x value of 100. As long as we have our delta x value with a change of x to equal negative 0.03. Therefore, we can see that 100 plus negative 0.03 is the same as 99.7. And the whole purpose of this is it allows us to use the x value of 100 and differentials to approximate this value. f of x plus delta x will be equal to f of x plus differential y or f prime of x times dx. So using this formula we can approximate the square root of 99.7 by evaluating f of 100 plus f prime of 100 times dx. Now I've done some work ahead of time. Here I set up our function our delta x, which is equal to dx, is negative 0.03. We notice from our formula we do have to find the derivative of the square root function, and I have found it here. So what we have to do now is find f of 100. Well, f of 100 be, would be the square root of 100 plus the derivative of the function evaluated at 100, 1 over 2 times the square root of 100 times dx. So we have 10 plus 1 over 2 times 10, or 20, times negative 0 0.03. This comes out to 9.985. Now if you type in the square root of 99.7 in your calculator to check our work, you'll be quite surprised this is extremely accurate. And again, the reason it's accurate is because our delta x is relatively small in relation to the x value of 100 that we're using. Now let's talk about propagated error. If a measured value of x is used to compute another value, f of x, the difference of f of x plus delta x and f of x is propagated error. Well, we can call this difference delta y, and since delta y is approximately differential y, we can use differentials to approximate propagated error. Let's see how this works. Let's say the radius of a ball bearing is measured to be 0 0.8 inches. If the measurement is correct, within 0 0.02 inches, estimate the propagated error. So again, what this is saying is when we measure the radius, it could be off by plus or minus 0 0.02 inches, which will result in an error, which will result in a possible error when finding the volume. So again, the reason we're allowed to use differentials to estimate the propagated error, the true propagated error would be delta V, or the change in the volume, but this is approximately equal to differential V, which is easier to calculate. So let's give it a try. Differential v is equal to 4 times pi times our radius squared times dr. Well, dr is equal to delta r, which would be plus or minus 0 0.02. So if we compute this, it will come out to plus or minus 16.08. We're dealing with volume, so it's inches cubed. So the volume could be off by approximately plus or minus 16 cubic inches if the measurement of the radius is within 0 0.02 inches. Well, another way to figure out how significant this error is is to take a look at something called relative error. The answer on the previous slide is given in relative terms if we compare dv with v, meaning differential v with the actual volume. This ratio was called relative error. So if we take the ratio of differential v to v, this is called relative error. When we take this ratio, we can see that this does simplify significantly. This 4 simplifies with this 4, that pi simplifies. These two factors of r simplify with two of these factors of r. So we have a 1 third in the denominator, which becomes 3 dr divided by r. So our relative error will be 3 times differential r, which was plus or minus 0 0.02 divided by the true radius, which is 0 0.8. If we calculate this, it comes out to 0 0.075, which is 7.5%. So if 7.5% error is acceptable, then we're fine. If, if it's not acceptable, then we have to find a more accurate measuring device. Thank you for watching. I hope this video explains the various uses of differentials. Have a good day.